Hey everybody, whoa, we're a little bit sideways. There we go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we're taking a look at the Artisan Cutlery Sirius. I have seriously filmed a lot of um, videos about artisan knives lately. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I'll probably stagger them throughout, you know, a couple of weeks slash months just to spare you guys the monotony, but yeah, I've done a lot of artisans lately, which I'm not complaining about. I do like artisan cutlery. Anyways, this knife here is pretty cool. And let's get into it. So, blade length. Three and a half inches, pretty much exactly. So definitely not a small knife, but it is quite slender. Uh, and this is designed by Ray Laconico, by the way, if you couldn't already tell just by looking at it. Uh, let's bring out our rats. There's the one. And here's the two. There we go. Uh, this is actually my first Ray Laconico design knife that I've ever experienced. So that's pretty cool. I've been excited about that. Here it is against the PM2. And the bug out. There we go. And let's get out our Civivis. There's the Elementum. And the Praxis. Pivot to pivot. There we go. And then let's compare it against some uh, CJRB slash Artisans. Uh, what do I have that I want to compare against? Okay, we'll do the Rhea, because there's a lot of similarities between these two, and the uh, small feldspar. There we go. Awesome. So what are we looking at in terms of materials here? We're looking at some stuff that I really, really like. We have a spear point blade of AR RPM9 steel. Great stuff. Love that steel. It's Artisan's... Um, exclusive uh that's what i'm looking for gosh guys i'm tired today um <laughs> proprietary steel oh man it's been quite the week for me yesterday yesterday okay we're gonna stop for a second story time yesterday i had two exams on the same day which just sucks i hate that and then I also had a major assignment for a different class due that day that I had to turn in. It was actually for one of the classes I was having the exam on, which was fun. And then I was assigned, you know, I had my basic homework and stuff. And then I was actually assigned the class that I was in before, one of my exam classes, actually assigned some homework that I had to do that night and turn in before midnight. So that was fun. And then the one of the exams I was taking, it was for calculus. Um, oh my gosh. It was online. So I'm sitting in my apartment doing it on my computer and the fire alarm goes off. The entire building, the fire alarm goes off. And I'm in the middle of this exam and it, it, it's, it's proctored. So they have like a webcam recording me as I'm taking the exam. And I got up, you know, because the fire alarm's going off, so I had to get up and leave. And in the, you know, when you're taking the exam, it tells you if you get up and leave your computer during the exam, it will be considered cheating and you'll fail. And so I'm like, well, you know, what do I do? And so I took, said into my webcam, uh, this is kind of unavoidable. And so I left and I came and by, you know, it was a, just a false alarm. And so by the time I got back to my computer, which I'd left running, uh, most of the time for the exam had elapsed. And so I sat down, I tried doing it and, uh, didn't get to finish it all the way. Emailed the professor about it saying, Hey, I had this issue. And he said, well, you know, it looks like you answered at least most of it. So I can't let you retake it. And I just, ugh. anyway, it was a, it was a long day. That was a complete ramble. I am so sorry. Back to the knife. This is a channel about knives. I'm just tired. So Pardon me through the review. 
All right, so the G10, very nice G10, I like that. Titanium pocket clip, which is really cool. Steel liner lock, and then we have a, I believe this is a steel pivot collar. Um, focus camera, come on, what's wrong with you? There we go, actually, you know what? I've got a magnet around here somewhere, there we go. Ah, keep a magnet on my keys. Okay, maybe it's an aluminum. I don't think it's titanium. I think it's aluminum. Ah, keep a magnet on my keys because I'm a geologist. All right. And I think that's all we have to go over. There are other versions of this knife. You can get it with uh, coated, non-coated blades. You can get micarta handles. You can get it in S35VN or ARRPM9, uh, which is less expensive. But anyways, let's let's just go on to the cutting. Alrighty, Artisan Cutlery, serious. I have done a lot of artisans today for my uh, review cutting. A lot of artisans, but let's get into this one. Designed by Ray Laconico. Really sleek, clean looking knife. Um, let's talk about it. How's the action? Very smooth. The thumb stud works very, very well. Front flipper works well. Uh, I would have preferred some better jumping on front flipper, but just the action itself works very, very nicely. Great action. Very modern action. That's how I describe that. Oh, there we go. Don't want to get in the shadows. Okay. How are the ergos? This is one of those knives that I would not say is exactly ergonomic because it's just two straight lines. It's just two lines are parallel to each other. So in hand, like there's no hot spots really or anything. The corners may be a little bit sharp, but I wouldn't call this knife ergonomic. I would call it comfortable, however, if that makes sense. So there we go. Uh, how's it carry? Very slim knife and pretty much any way you want to measure it. Uh, titanium pocket clip. Let's zoom in real quick. Get down there. If you guys can see that. It's a good titanium clip. Um, and it works pretty much how you would want a mill titanium clip to, uh, to work. So, no complaints there. How does she slice? Well, let's grab some cardboard scraps I have here. AR RPM 9 blade. It's a spear point. It slices pretty well uh, for what I would expect a gentleman carry-ish knife to be. It slices pretty well. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and do our pull through. Whew. Yeah, it did struggle a little bit on that. Did struggle a little bit on that. Let's get down here. Oops. Whoo! Really, really good on the push cuts. Very, very nice. That was actually really good. Yeah, and get that sticker off of there. Those were some very nice, clean cuts. I did not feel the blade getting hung up. I didn't feel it getting, you know, like twisting in the, going through the foam. Very, very nice and clean slices. Awesome. Let's get back to the table. Alrighty, so what am I liking and not liking about the Artisan Cutlery serious um a lot there's a lot that i like and we'll start with the likes so this video has been a little bit um <laughs> late uh, in the coming i actually gave this guy a an award for it was in my i think it was number nine for my knives of the budget knives of the year for 2021 and now we're finally getting to the review but uh yeah let's talk about the knife
which I already said. Again, I'm tired, guys. <laughs> so, first thing I like, I've always liked Ray Laconico's design aesthetic. Uh, very simple, very clean lines. You know, this knife is really just, I mean, I mean, the handle's just two parallel lines. The blade, you think of it the, kind of the same way. Very, very clean. Uh, and I'm a sucker, I don't know why, but I'm a sucker for thumb studs that are like nestled into the, the scale. I don't know why, but I just love that. I love that so much. <laughs> so I like that a lot. Uh, and I think all the different versions of this knife that are offered are very attractive. They all look, mwah, chef's kiss, very, very nice. This pivot collar, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love that Artisan slash CGRB does a lot of pivot collars in their designs. I think pivot collars just are, are so nice. Just a nice little accent, nice little bling. I like pivot collars quite a bit. And a lot of things about this knife, uh, you can tell that they were trying to fit into the theme of just keeping it clean, keeping it elegantly simple. For example, lanyard post in the backspacer. I like that. I think that's very, very nice. The pocket clip, very clean, very simple titanium milled clip. And as you can see, it goes into that channel there, the Laconico groove. That's very, very nice. The um, pocket clip attaches, I think, actually, I actually haven't taken the knife apart, I'm just realizing. Either this screw holds in the pocket clip or it's attached from the inside. Either way, keeps that pocket clip looking very, very clean. And honestly, this blacked out look is pretty nice. I, I wouldn't necessarily expect for a gents carry to be murdered out, but I like it. I like it a lot. It's very, very subtle. Next thing, the action is very good. This thumb stud especially, oh my gosh, that just powers out of there. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, you can do that where you get under the thumb stud and you kind of like push up. Works very, very well. You can do like the get it more on the side and push like sideways. Works very, very good. If you're left-handed, or if you're a right-handed person that has a left hand, you just want to put the knife in that hand like I did just now, you can reverse flick it. So that's cool. The front flipper works nicely as well. Um, so yeah, pretty fun little fidgety knife. I've said this before, when I'm carrying a knife that's a front flipper, I always like to have a second means of, of deployment because doing a front flipper in my everyday life when I need to cut something, for, for me, it just isn't the most intuitive thing. And so every time I was actually using this knife, I opened it with a thumb stud. And I really only use a front flipper when I was fidgeting with it, when I'm just sitting down playing. And so, yeah. I, I definitely appreciate that they have the, the double options. Hardware's minimal, that's cool. This G10 is very nice. This is absolutely gorgeous G10. I love when G10 shows the grain, unlike, let's get this, Praxis, where you just kind of have this slab. I like, I like this G10 that shows the grain. The G10 is contoured. It's a very slim knife, but you do have that contouring, which is really, really excellent. Good attention to detail. I like that a whole lot. You can see here the lock bar has a, uh, chamfer on it. That's good. And speaking of that lock bar, this is easier to disengage than I expected. I expected to complain about the disengagement for this, but uh, no, it, it actually works fine. And I want to talk about the milling on the G10 too. Very clean, milled in here in the chamfer, and look what they did for the little th thumb stud groove. Very nice chamfering there. The whole knife just feels nice and softened, which is really cool. How are the ergos? This is a knife that doesn't really have ergonomics. It fits in your hand. I mean, again, it's just two parallel lines. 
It just kind of fits in your hand, and there it sits. And I like that. That's pretty nice. The only time I ever had any trouble was if I, like, climbed back here, and then that corner dug, dug into my hand, but when would I ever want to be back here? You want to be here. And it's very good. You can't feel the clip. Very good. And you're not going to be using this knife for anything that you really need to bear down on and, you're I gotta cut this. No. No, this is not that type of knife. This is, you know, you're going to be doing lighter duty stuff with it, so you don't really need a bear grip on it. Uh, I will say I do like that they did this jimping down here to give you a little spot to, to index. Uh, we'll come back to that, but I do like the idea. Let's talk about the blade, because I, I really do like this blade. Very good uh, sharpening choil, which is nice. AR RPM 9 is an amazing steel. I love AR RPM 9. Such a good steel. One of my favorite budget steels. It's basically powdered 9CR, uh, as far as I understand. But uh, man, it just, it performs so well. I definitely prefer over 9CR. And honestly, if, I think I might have said this before, but if all of the knives in my collection were magically turned into AR RPM 9, I'm not sure I'd be all that mad about it. You know, there are definitely steels I think I like more than AR RPM 9, but it's a very good steel, very solid, absolutely no complaints. Anyways, this blade itself, itself, its shelf, my gosh, is very beautifully shaped, very nice, elegant spear point. You have this nice swedge here. I like that a whole lot. The coating uh, seems to have held up pretty well. Um, you can see that I do have, let's see, is that? I think that's just tape residue. Yeah, but the coating itself has held up pretty well. Pretty smooth coating, I like that. Here you can see they have Laconico's name, Ray Laconico there on the the spine, which is kind of his thing. So that's cool. I like the Artisan logo. And uh, yeah, the, the knife itself performs pretty well. It's a flat grind. It's not the, the thinnest thing. I was measuring it between about 17 and 19 thousandths, depending on where I was measuring. That's perfectly fine. And this knife, uh, the whole time I was using it, I never really had any complaints. And because I wasn't using it for anything aggressive. Opening packages, opening food, cutting a little tiny string. And that's really all that you, you want your EDC knife to do. And this is definitely an EDC slash gents knife, so 100% happy with that. Next up, the carry's good. You know, the knife folds into a very slender package. We'll talk about the clip. Uh, it, it does work better than I thought. Uh, being in this channel, uh, it does go in and out of the pocket better than I expected. Titanium clips are not my favorite clips. Like, mill titanium clips, like, this one works fine. But spring clips do just work a little bit better. This is just a better clip. However, as far as mill titanium clips go, it works perfectly fine. I don't really have any complaints. All right, so now let's talk about what I can complain about. So the first thing I'm going to complain about is jimping. Uh, I don't think the jimping on this knife was very well done. Uh, you can see here the jimping for, for the front flipper. You can see there's like three bumps spaced far apart and they stop right there. A good front flipper, I want to see fine jimping that goes all the way around. And it works. The front flipper works. But it could be better. It really could be better. And then this jimping here... Like I said, I like the thought. I like that it's there, but it doesn't really do anything. I can't really feel it. Again, it's just not aggressive enough. Plus, if they really wanted this to work, they should have had jimping along here. I know, I know they wanted to put Ray's name there. I, I, I get that. But at least jimping to here, I would like it all the way out to here, though, because that means that you can get this knife... Pinching it with your thumb and uh, whatever this finger is called, forefinger, whatever. Yeah. Pinching them like that, that's where your, your grip is. That's where you grip the knife. And then these fingers back here are just for control. And on a knife that has a very fine tip like this, very fine blade all around, that might be something that you would want to do. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, 
Uh, next thing. Um, I would not recommend this knife for someone with big hands because I do think even though access to the, to the lock bar works out for me, if you have bigger thumbs than I do, I don't think it'll be very good at all. And I mean, lock bar access is important. <laughs> On this knife, again, it works for me and I do love the I know, this is kind of hypocritical. I'm always going on about how, or lock bar access this and lock bar access that. And then I also love this aesthetic here. Whatever, sue me. Uh, next thing, this is not a very lefty friendly knife because there's only one thumb stud. You don't get a thumb stud on this side, lefties. Again, if you're left-handed, you can just reverse flick it. Or, you know, front flipper, you can use, geez. Sorry, table. You know, you can use the front flipper left-handed, but then, you know, the pot clip is also not reversible, so that's kind of sad. And then, um, the other thing too is, to, to me, this knife looks like the handle is a lot longer than the blade. And I'm not someone that usually complains about ratios. And as you can see here, when it's folded up, it doesn't look that bad. But when it's open, like the handle seems, it seems like there's a lot of handle compared to the blade. <laughs> but I don't know. It's not really a big complaint. It's more just an aesthetics thing. Last thing I want to talk about is the price. Um, this is not really part of the negatives. Uh, let's actually, actually, we're going into my final conclusions and we're going to start by talking about the price. So this knife is about $70. And this CGRB Scoria was almost $80. CGRB is supposedly the budget brand of Artisan, and I, I understand. <sighs> so Artisan, um, you know, this knife has a higher inversion, and so knives that have higher inversions uh, and budget versions, those are branded Artisan. And then knives that are only budget are branded CGRB. You know, there's no higher inversion. However, I must say, I kind of wish this knife was branded Artisan in hopes that maybe we could get a higher end version of it. But that's that's not really worth what the, not complaint, just me wondering about things. This came, the packaging this came with was pretty, pretty cool. You know, a, a box, a hard crush proof box, had a little pouch that comes in. In fact, I think I have an Artisan pouch laying around. Yeah, yeah there we go. I don't think, this isn't the one that this knife came in, but, you know, came with a pouch and stuff. I kind of wish they'd start doing some of that for CGRB, especially since CGRB is, you know, $80. It's not exactly a budget knife. You know, when a bunch of CGRBs were, you know, $35, $40, so, you know, makes makes more sense. But, you know, again, this isn't a complaint. This is just kind of me musing about the blurred lines between budget and not budget and stuff like that. And... Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, it's probably not something that needs to be addressed at all. Again, my brain's just kind of foggy today. So, final conclusions. Is this knife worth that money? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I think it is. I think you're getting great materials. You're getting a Ray Laconico design, which is awesome. For me, that was a big selling point on this knife. It's like, yeah, I want a Ray Laconico, and I don't want to spend you know, a whole lot of money today. So yeah, that's awesome. I think this is a great knife, I really do. And this has kind of become one of my go-to discreet slash church, quote unquote, church carry knives. It's a very easy knife to slip in the pocket when you're going out. It feels fancy. It makes, you know, this is one of those things that only a knife person will, will get. You know, you wanna match your knife to what you're doing that day. And uh, this this definitely kind of fits the more, you know, if you wanna feel fancy today, you can carry this and be like, oh, 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 I feel fancy without spending $300. So I think that's awesome. I think that's really, really awesome. I do like this knife a lot. It's very well built. It is a good performer for what, you know, you're going to be doing with a knife of this genre. And yeah, it absolutely gets a recommend from me. Very good knife. Good job, Artisan. Good job, Ray Laconico. Good knife. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. Comment below and subscribe. If you didn't, comment below tell me why not. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Lefty.